Uh, today what we're going to talk about is a very simple animation process uh, using just expression blend. So for those of you that aren't familiar with the environment, let me give you a very, very quick tour. We have a, a design pane here where we can, we can move stuff around and do whatever we need to do. Uh, we also have a XAML view, which allows us to come in and see all of the XAML that we have for our specific elements. And you can see for each of these, we have a, a fill with a color and a specific data about its location. Um, nothing you'd want to write by hand, but the tool really does most of this stuff for you. So we'll jump back to design. And we've got a couple other things I want to show you here. So on the left-hand side, we have all of our layers. So all of the different things that are on here are all made up of different layers. Uh, and the ones we're most interested in today are the gears on the logo. So for those of you unfamiliar with this logo, um, this is a logo from uh, CodeMash, which is a, a technology conference that takes place in Sandusky, Ohio. Um, it is a technology agnostic conference. So uh, whether you're Java, Ruby, Python, .NET, it doesn't matter. There's tracks for everyone. And the idea is, is that it, it's an opportunity for everyone in technology to get together and talk about their similarities instead of the differences that we seem to dwell on day in and day out. So um, it's a great conference to go and sit next to a Java guy and sit in a Java track or a Ruby track and really learn how and what they do the things that they do. And, and uh, it, it really can help you uh, get enlightened on how you might better approach the problems you're solving in your technology. Um, so that's enough about that. You can go to CodeMash.org uh, to read more about it. But um, the, the purpose of this podcast is certainly to, to talk about some animation. So let's get into these gears. We've got our orange gear, and you can see that we break that out into several more layers. We've got a uh, frame of the gear, a black circle that's actually laying over it so it looks like a gear, um, the center of it, the blue dot, and then, of course, the teeth themselves. The teeth are the thing we're most interested in. So you can see they're all in here. There's eight of them. Um, but what we're really interested in is the group as a whole. We want to rotate those around the circle. So what we're going to do is click on orange gear teeth, and if I just come in here to my properties, you can see I've got all this great stuff here, one of which is, um, let me rotate, roll over that, it's rotate. And if I rotate this, you can see that I'm rotating, but I'm not rotating around my gear. I'm rotating around that center dot that you can see right here. So that's probably not going to work for me very well. What I need to do is move that dot first. So I'm going to take my dot, and I'm going to drag it over here into the center of the gear, which is really what I'm more interested in. And it's pretty important when you're doing rotations and things that have some precision uh, you get in there real close and make sure that you've got it right. So I'm going to zoom way in on that dot, and I'm going to make sure it's right in the middle. And that is pretty darn close. So I can live with that. That's close enough. Go back to seeing it in the frame here. And uh, now all we need to do is create our animation. So now we know if we rotate this thing, they're going to rotate around the gear. So let me set that back to zero. Uh, and now what we're going to do is we have to create a storyboard. So I'm going to come up here, and if you had storyboards, you could search for them. Uh, but since I don't have any, I'm going to create a new one. And I'm going to call this gear spin, uh, so that later, if I, want to if I want to call this animation in code or something, uh, I can certainly do that. Now you can see the, the environment has changed a little bit. Uh, I've got quite a bit more information over here on my left-hand side. Uh, and that's because we're talking about a timeline now, and seconds and minutes and things that we're really going to need to manipulate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the layout of this. I'm going to go to the animation workspace. Um, which I can do by this, or I can hit F6 and F7 to toggle between, so I'll hit that and then show you just by hitting F6, I can jump right back. So uh, it's, it's really your preference, but for animation, you get a lot more space here to work with. So we've got our gear teeth, and uh, what we're going to do, if we come down here and make sure that we still have that selected, we need to out now to set keyframes in our animation so that we know when and where and how things are going to get where they get. So we're going to record a keyframe on the orange gear teeth, and you can see that it creates a, a little oval here. Um, and next, what I'm going to do is say, okay, that's the position I want it to be in at zero seconds. But at one second, I want those gear teeth to have moved somewhere. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to move my thing over to one second. I'm going to create another keyframe that says, hey, when I get here, I need to do something else. And then I'm going to come in and change it. So I'm going to change this to 180 degrees. And you can see now that the box around it has actually moved. Let me zoom out for you a little bit so you can see that. Uh, we'll go to 33%. If I change this back to zero, the box is now up here around it. And if I change this to 180, it has rotated 180 degrees around the center point that we set. So if we hit play, you can see that our gear teeth actually spin. Pretty simple stuff. But now we have two other teeth, that, the two other gears that we really need to animate. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to test my project first. We get a little error here, but that's because I'm trying to act, run an ActiveX control locally. That will not normally happen. And you can see now that when I load my, I'm going to hit F5 here. Uh, when I load my application, you can see the gear spins for a full second. 
that's all well and good, but I really want these gears to spin forever. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I have, you can see now that inside here I have a render transform. Inside there I have rotation and inside there I have angle. I'm going to come to my angle and I'm going to right click on it, choose edit repeat count, and I have a choice of one, two, three, whatever. Um, but if I really want it to go forever, they give me a nice infinity button over here. So I'm going to set it to forever and hit OK. And you can see that it actually extends that out there forever. I can close all that down there. I'm not interested in the orange gear at all anymore. Now I'm going to work on the green one. So I'm going to open my green gear, and again, we have the same setup. Uh, and I'm, work I'm working just on the teeth. And you can see, again, we have a, a setup where the center is not where I want the center to be. Now, the first time I did this, I didn't have a timeline. So my timeline recording wasn't on, and a lot of the stuff that's going on right now wasn't in effect. If I move my center point, it's assuming that I want to do that during the animation, and that's not really the case. I want to kill this, stop recording, and move my dot now. So I can come down here, and uh, let's, let's zoom in quite a bit more. Let's scroll, and I'm going to move my dot right to the middle. Again, we want to be pretty darn close. It doesn't have to be perfect, because I can sit down and really do the math on this. But I want to be very, very close. And it just doesn't want to cooperate, does it? OK, there's pretty close. So now we've got our green gear teeth. We've got our center. We want to move this back to zero seconds. We want to make sure we're on our green gear teeth. We want to set another keyframe. And then we want to move it to one second. And we can set this again. Now this time I'm going to do minus 180 degrees because when gears work together they actually rotate in opposite directions. And so I want to make sure that that is shown here as well. Uh, but I didn't do that right. The first thing I needed to do was set a second keyframe. Uh, in fact, I did none of that right. If you take a step back and notice, I never turned my recording back on. So let's do that first. Turn my recording on by hitting the red dot. Then I'm going to set this to one second, or zero seconds, I'm sorry. Get my oval. Move this to one second get my oval, and then I'm going to change this to minus 180 degrees. And I'm just going to jump through all the steps that we did before. I'm going to come down and change my render transform to rotation, angle. I'm going to set my repeat count to infinity, and hit OK. And now if we come in here and run our project again, you'll see that we have two gears running infinitely. But that blue gear is still kind of not looking so good. So let's go jump on that one real quick. So again, we have close our green gear down, and then we have a blue gear. And inside blue gear, of course, we have our blue gear teeth. So let me zoom out on this a little bit, and you can see that our dot is way over here. I want to move it to there. But again, I made that mistake because I left my timeline recording on. So I'm going to control Z out of that, I'm going to turn my recording off, and then I'm going to move my dot. And we'll get it close, and then we'll zoom in uh, so we can really see what we're doing. You can see we got close, but that's definitely not the middle. And that looks pretty good. Again, it, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be close. So now we've got our stuff. We want to turn our recording back on, and we want to get this back to zero. We want to set our keyframe on blue gear teeth. So I set my keyframe. I move it to one second. I set my keyframe. And again, I want to set this one to minus 180 also. And I think that's not going to work because I left something uh, in there by default. So let's take a look. Yeah, and that one is not rotating. So what I actually want to do is make sure I clicked on just that keyframe, and I want to set that to zero. And now, still nothing. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete all of this just to make sure that we get it right. And we're going to come to one second. And now we're going to set our keyframe on the blue gear teeth. And then we're going to move it. And then we're going to set another one. And then we're going to change it to minus 180. And now we'll just test our project and see how that works out. And you can see that they're all spinning, except for the blue one, which stopped after one second, because I haven't taken the time yet to go in and set that to infinity. So let's do that very quickly. Infinity, OK. And now let's run it one more time. And then I will jump into the XAML to show you everything we've created. So now we have three spinning gears that all line up. We've got the whole head. Everything's there, and everything looks pretty good. So that, in a nutshell, is how we do some simple gear animation in Blend.